was so good to, to go to Namibia for ministry, to go to Swakopmund and to be at uh, one of our shofar churches there. God worked in incredible ways. It was just, uh, it's, sometimes it's just good to go. Because when you go somewhere, then you discover again what God has placed upon one's life. And it was unbelievably stressful to get there. So we, have, we flew last week, Wednesday, um, Joburg, and then to Vintuk. And then on Monday, both Vian and I were tested positive with our COVID PCR tests because we had it the month before. Yo, so that was stressful to try and figure it out. But maybe I'll share, maybe hopefully next week, I'll share a little bit about the story. But in the process of, of uh, trusting the Lord for, for getting to Namibia, the Lord actually downloaded a whole lot of things into my spirit of what He wants to do uh, in the nations. It's just, yo, oh, God's heart is burning for the nations. And, and I really believe that we as a church, we are called to, to go. Yeah, when you go, there's something beautiful that happens. You catch a bit more of the fire. And so I'm trusting to uh, this morning to stir your faith. So I'm going to share some stories that will hopefully stir your faith. And when faith is in the house, then Jesus shows up. Amen. So that's why I'm going to share some stories to stir your faith. When faith is present, God moves. That's just how it is. So, um, so the kingdom of God or the kingdom of heaven, that, that song we sang about the kingdom of heaven, you know, it's just so beautiful. Seek first the kingdom and all will be added. That is so beautiful. That is so powerful to declare it. Seek first the kingdom. Just, just seek him. Just put him first in your life. And all, everything else will be added to our lives. But so the kingdom of heaven, the, or, or heaven, in heaven there is no sickness. There is no demonic powers. There's no darkness. There's no fear. There's no, no evil. They, in, in the kingdom of heaven, the reign of Jesus, of God, is perfectly established. And so Jesus often preached. He said, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. He proclaimed it, then he demonstrated. And, and, and so in, in, in the kingdom of God, we, we live in a kingdom that is voice activated. You have to proclaim it. You have to declare it. And then you have to obey his voice. And then he moves. That, that, that realm breaks into this realm and whatever is not of God then has to give way. When his presence comes in, we are restored. We are made whole. We are made new. And so I'm trusting for that to happen in the service. In the first service, we had a whole lot of people getting healed here in the front. It was amazing. Beautiful. Beautiful. Um, so the one lady, seven years of major back problems. All the pain just disappeared. Gone. Hallelujah. And Jesus heals and some other guys as well, different parts of joints and things were healed. And I, and I feel that the first service was just warm up of what the Lord wants to do in this service in Jesus' name. Come on, declare it. Jesus Christ is my healer. He is. He is. So uh, in 2017, I went to um, Swakopmund, to Shofar Swakopmund. And uh, it was just good to... To, to see what God did then and how it is still manifesting today. So the one lady, Marlies Archer, they, she and her husband, they were here uh, for four months. And uh, so in 2017, um, prayed for her. She had major back problems. Since the age of 16, she fell off a quad bike and um, major back problems for the next 16 years or more even. So five years ago, she was healed while... Uh, I had a word of knowledge about Bax, and she came forward. She was healed on the spot in front of everybody. And uh, five years later, she is still healed. Amen. Come on, give Jesus praise for that. <laughs> Jesus, Jesus Christ is the healer. And I know some of us struggle with this whole concept, um, but I'm sharing these stories because you can see people get healed and they stay healed. You know, so that's that, that the reality of God, you know, over time, it, 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 it reveals His his goodness and his glory. And so an, another guy on, on that Sunday morning in 2017, there was a guy there, Paul Vulcan, and uh, he was diagnosed with cancer. The doctors gave him six weeks to live. 
just six weeks. When he shared that with me, I was like, okay, Jesus, please, please. You know, and, and that weekend, I, I didn't see a lot of physical manifestations of the power of God when I was there in 2017. But when I prayed with him and some other guys prayed along, we prayed for him and the power of God hit him. <laughs> That's the only way to explain it. But he went, he crumbled to the floor and, and, and he felt the power. But I could feel the power, the presence of God all over him. He said he felt like glory, like power, electricity running up and down his, from head to toe, head to toe, head to toe. So he got up feeling much better and... Uh, you know, although the cancer wasn't completely uh, removed, um, five years later, he's still alive and uh, posting on Facebook and seeing his grandkids and, and he's blessed in that sense, you know. So the Lord extended his life miraculously. The, the medical doctors gave him six weeks. So I tell you, when God shows up, anything is possible. Anything is possible. And, and I believe this morning, God wants to come and heal some of our hearts and set us free from some stuff and heal our physical bodies. So I wanna remind us of this fivefold ministry diagram. So in at Shofar Swakop Moon, it was just so awesome to actually to, to minister into the different fivefolds. So on the Thursday evening, uh, we ministered on the prophetic. So it was a prophetic training night and uh, I, I really felt, at the Open Heavens Prophetic Conference that I received an upgrade, an increase of prophetic grace upon my life. So I felt the Lord say to me, step out. So on the evening, we had epic awesomeness, all prophetic presence, intimacy, prophecy. Um, just I felt the Lord say, step out and just prophesy over people publicly. So I did an Andre Bronkos kind of thing. You know, and the power of God hit these people. The one guy was crawling under the chair and just tears. And it was just like, it was amazing what God was doing. God was just breaking out. And that was a Thursday night, the prophetic, just releasing the praise of God and uh, prayed, had laid hands on everybody. I'm doing this now more. I really feel those just lay hands on everybody. So we had everybody 100 plus people coming through, praying for everybody. It took a while, but uh, it's, it's, it's fun. Anyway, so people had beautiful encounters with God. And then on the Friday evening, then my wife and I did a marriage enrichment evening, and that's relations flourish, that's the pastoral. So we were just going for, after seeing hearts healed, marriages restored, it was such a beautiful evening. I think even the Friday evening was more powerful than the Thursday evening as hearts were being touched by the love of God and hope was restored for people's marriages. And then I brought out the, the big one on the Friday evening. I brought out Bobby. You're looking for Bobby. Bobby van Jarsveld. Yeah, when, when my, my wife, when things are really going tough, then I'm like, bring for Bobby and I'm with Bobby dance, oh Bobby, yeah, we must dance a little bit on, on Bobby von Jarsfeld. And uh, so we had everybody dance a bit and have fun and just see hearts restored and healed. It was, it was wonderful. And then on the Sunday, we then focused on the apostolic or the kingdom reign. It was healing Sunday morning and evening. Sonica ministered on mental health on the evening and the morning. Um, I focused more on, on physical health, but also on, on heart, on hearts being healed. And it was amazing to see how the different fivefolds all add to one another. They don't stand alone. If you add the prophetic to the apostolic, it goes into another dimension. And if you add the pastoral, the relational side of things and that grace to healing hearts and restoring lives, then you go into complete another dimension. And this is what we have been called to. This is what I have been called to, to, to bring the fivefold to the church of Jesus Christ. I wanna remind us what Andre Bronkor said when he left a, a church in Europe. The Lord said to him, the church in Europe will go extinct if they don't embrace the fivefold ministry. That's a word. I was like, man, 10 years ago, I felt Jesus told me that. This is so awesome. I love you. Mwah, mwah, mwah. Beautiful. Somebody else heard the same thing. So it was just amazing to, 
to, to, to connect with uh, Prophet Andre Bronkhorst and then to hear that the things that the Lord told him is, yeah, it's like a beautiful God connection. And uh, yeah, so, so the apostolic is that demonstration of the kingdom of God, not only proclamation, but demonstration. And so what the enemy has been trying to do is he's been trying to disconnect the apostolic and the prophetic from the rest. So he's been demonizing the prophetic and the apostolic. And, and, uh, and many churches and many church groups, is this, you only get a pastor and maybe a teacher and maybe an evangelist. And so the church is dry. The church is struggling. And so uh, I made some of the, Sonic and I went on, on a bit of a holiday after with Vian after the time in Swakop. And we met some of the church members at one of these uh, safari lodge places. And they just said they haven't experienced the presence of God in like, years like they did that Sunday morning when they were in the service. God was in the house. And there's something about when you embrace the full fivefold, then the kingdom of God comes in a beautiful, beautiful way. And uh, so I want to remind us again about this, the fivefold we need to embrace it. We need to embrace all five rivers, all five anointings. We need to create an environment where the fullness of Jesus can manifest. The apostolic is the power of God, summarizing, is simplifying and summarizing. The power of God and the prophetic is the presence of God. And if you don't have those two, what the heck do you have? Rest? You, you don't become who you're supposed to be. And so the Lord is, has called us to call the church into the apostolic prophetic grace. Man, and God is moving. He is behind this message in such incredible ways. So I have good news. Every one of you are gonna get healed. The latest one day when you step into heaven. Okay, praise God. But through the kingdom of God coming, we can pull the kingdom of heaven into the now. Okay, and that's what we are trusting for this morning. As I said, already multiple people were healed here this morning, okay? And, and I really feel the Lord saying this is a miracle service and I believe He's gonna move. So let's look at this. Matthew 10, verse seven. It says, and as you go, so, so the back story is Jesus came and He proclaimed the kingdom of heaven is at hand and then He healed people, demonstrated, set them free. Then He commissions His disciples to do the same. And He says, and as you go, Come on, say, as I go. Preach, saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand. King, the, the kingdom of God is, is speech activated, okay? You need to say it. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. So let's say that again. The kingdom of heaven is at hand right now. And then it says, heal the sick. It doesn't say pray for the sick. It says heal the sick. Cleanse the lepers. Raise the dead, cast out demons. Others set the whole person free from darkness on their souls, bodies, the whole deal. Freely you have received, freely give. You have received, now give. Okay, I'm gonna come back to that in a moment. But one of the keys is to see the kingdom of God come is we need to partner with the Lord. We say, God, God what are you doing? That's, that's all I'm saying every, every time I do ministry. Hey, God, what are you doing? I want to partner with what you are doing. I want to go where your spirit is leading. And so there's a, a guy called William Branham. He, had a, he was like a prophet with a healing ministry. And every day he would see a vision of what God was going to do that day. And then he would simply do that. He saw a vision in the morning and then he would simply step out and do what the Holy Spirit lay on his heart. So he partnered with the Lord. Unfortunately, in, in, in his case, he, he lost his way later in life. He tried to be a teacher. He tried to do doctrine, but he was a prophet. He needed to partner with the theologians and the teachers so that he can get anchored in the word of the Lord. But he was one of those prophetic eagles that fly off the pages of scripture and then got completely deceived. So uh, again, not embracing the full fivefold. But I mean, the things that happened in his life was, was real. I mean, he, he and some other guys, they came to, I think to Durban and they packed out a stadium with people in Durban. And this is now in 1960s or something. And uh, amazing, amazing things happen. So last week, Sunday morning, as we were praying for people, I just heard this in my spirit. I heard 
hearing, hearing. And I was asking the Lord, okay, God, who do you want to heal? So I, I felt like people that have hearing problems. So late in this, so some people were getting healed. Beautiful things were happening. God encounters were happening. And, uh, and so then <laughs> they brought this young boy, 11 years old, Tristan, with hearing aids in. And he, he had a speech impediment. So he was, you know, he was born with terrible hearing. And uh, so uh, it was just a beautiful moment. So he's 11 years old, asked him to take out the hearing aids. And then we just prayed. We prayed for the presence of God to come, the presence of God to touch him. And, uh, and then I said, okay, test. And then he said, what, 20% better? Because he could hear the music. Then he said, 40%. Then he said, like, 85% better. It was such a moment. I mean, so um, later that day, his mom, his mom checked without his hearing aids. She was just speaking softly, and he could hear her. And on Tuesday night, he testified in front of the youth that uh, Jesus healed him. Isn't that awesome? Come on, give Jesus praise. It was such, it was such a moment because as I was praying for him and as he was, he, God was healing him, there was such a beautiful prophetic flow where I felt like the Lord saying, he's going to be a sign to the nations. He's going to be a prophet to the nations. He's going to proclaim the good news of Christ to the nations. And he was so um, impacted. And then the evening, his nine-year-old brother came. Same thing. Hearing aids, born like this. And then Jesus healed him as well. Isn't that awesome? Praise God. Jesus heals. Jesus heals. He is good. And, and you know, I know even when I share the story now about Paul Vulcan when they're you know, falling under the power of God. So, so on the Thursday evening, we were praying for people. And I've seen way worse than we experience. I just, you know, every now and again, someone would have an encounter with the Lord and they would fall to the ground like the one lady, a teacher. Um, she was on the floor for about an hour and she couldn't get up after that. She had this, and she, a feedback was she's never in her life experienced anything like this. She had this encounter with the Lord that rocked her world. You see, but this doesn't happen in that church. So there was an older guy, I think about 80 years old, a skeptic. And so he was checking me out the whole Thursday evening. It's like, and he didn't come forward. His wife came forward for prayer, but he didn't. So it's Friday morning, I'm sitting there at the church in the foyer, and then he came in, and I said, hey, hi, and chatted to him. And then he said to me, I have a fight with you. I said, yeah, why? <laughs> Are you hypnotizing the people? <laughs> he was persuaded. Hypnotize. I said, no, I don't push people. I just put my hand on their head or their shoulder, and then Jesus touches them. You know, and so he's, and he says, my wife, I know she doesn't fake it, but she went forward, and you prayed for her, and then she went down. So what is that? Are you hypnotizing the people? I said, no, sir, I'm not, not hypnotizing, just loving them and allowing Jesus to, to touch them. And so I, I get a good chat with him and, uh, and the Lord just revealed things in his heart. I have bitterness and anger and third marriage and a whole lot of things that just, just this, a lot of hurt, a lot of hurt. So just I had opportunity to love him because, you know, how these things work is when you don't understand it, you tend to fear it. And I explained to him that in the Bible, we see it many, many times where somebody encounters either an angel or God. What happens? They fall to the ground as if dead, as if dead. When you encounter the creator of heaven and earth, it's going to rock your world. Okay, so it's in the Bible. And then I explained to him also, um, it's also like, you know, if you stand in the waves, you know, you stand there and, and if a wave crashes into you, what's going to happen? You're going to fall over. And then he said, oh, that happened to me like a month ago. I fell over. I lay there for about two hours. I couldn't get up because he's like a lot of pain in his body and so forth. And in the end, you know, one is heart and could pray with him. The Holy Spirit revealed things about he wants to heal and restore his heart. But so I know these things are out the box, but it's in the Bible. Our God is outside the box. If you want an in the box God, guess what? You're not going to have God. You're going to have dry, empty religion, dead religion. Most churches find themselves there because we're too afraid to step out. And so I'm just after the Lord. I just, God, I want you. 
I want you, I want you, I want you in the house. And so I asked this question, God, what are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? And I believe God's gonna set us free this morning and heal bodies. But he's after our hearts first and foremost. The, the physical healing is secondary, but he, you know, what's the point of getting physically healed, but you're still bitter and angry and unforgiven and you're disconnected from God, you know? So the Lord often, when we pray for healing, it's, he, he wants to touch your heart. He wants to show you he loves you. And I, our heavenly father is a loving dad. So which of us as a loving dad would not do everything in your power to help your child if they are struggling and if they are tormented and, they, and they've got pain in their bodies. As parents, we would do all we can. We get the money, we'll pay the doctors, we'll do whatever we can to help our children. How much more our heavenly father has paid the price for our healing through Jesus' death at the cross. Jesus paid a price that you and I can receive now by faith. He paid for your forgiveness. He paid for, for, for all torment to leave your life. He paid for your body to be healed. And as I said, the latest you're gonna get healed is one day in heaven. But through faith, we can pull eternity into the now. And I wanna remind us again of the story of this young man, 17 year old young man who's been in and out of hospital most of his life and the pastor was, speaking to him and then he, and, and this young man said, God is fair. And the pastor's like, what do you mean? How much have you been like in, in hospital and, and all struggling with all your sickness? And he says, well, about 13 years of his 17 years, he's been in and out of hospital. 13 years in a hospital. And I said, how can you say God is fair? And the young man's response was, well, God has all of eternity to make, make it up to me. He has all of eternity to make it up to me. In other words, if you and I are anchored in eternity, man, we are free to trust in Jesus. It's gonna get good, the latest there. <laughs> but what if God shows up now? Today is a great, great day for a miracle. A whole lot of miracles. Amen. Come on, say, God, today is a great day uh, for a whole lot of miracles. Amen. Amen. So 1 Corinthians 3, verse 16. It says, do you not know that you are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwells in you? It's like, do you not realize? I feel this, this, this is like a, a lost truth to large portions of the church. It's like we live this as if this is metaphorical when it was supposed to be tangible, supposed to be your reality. I mean, think about this. You had Moses' tabernacle. What was the purpose of the tabernacle? To create an environment where the glory of God can come, the presence of God can come. There was no other purpose. If God wasn't present, the tabernacle had no purpose. Solomon's temple, what was the purpose? To create an environment where the glory of God can come, where people can encounter Him and can worship Him. And in the New Testament, where is the temple now? That's you, that's me. We are supposed to tangibly carry the presence of God upon our lives, to carry his, his heart, his goodness, to manifest his nature, his kindness, his love, his goodness, and his power. But we need to carry his presence. We need to live in a way that we'll always, our hearts are always turning to him, God, more of you. That's why we worship like we worship this morning. It's like, God, we are, we are after you in the house. That's the purpose of the temple. Your purpose in life is to carry His presence. And His presence isn't just for you. Obviously, you're gonna have joy, you're gonna have peace, you're gonna have freedom, but it is to give His presence away to others. To give His presence away. I felt the Lord asked me this question over the last two weeks as we were like, really struggling to get into Namibia. And I just felt the Lord ask me this question, Andre, would you take my presence to the nations? Because if you would, I will open doors for you. I said, yes, Lord, yes. Now don't worry, we're not going away. We are here, we are local church people, but we go and we come back. And we go and we come back. <laughs> 
But there's this cry of God's heart, take my presence to the nations. Give my people a taste of what is possible, of what is possible. It, it, it rocks people's lives. It rocks churches when they suddenly, exp- wow, okay, so this is the real deal. And then it's like, you can realign. Okay, that's what we're going for, the presence of God. Not just singing a few songs and listening to somebody speak. Do you not know that you are the temple of God and the Spirit of God dwells in you? In other words, when you carry the praise of God, when you stretch forth your hand, it is as if Jesus is stretching forth His hand. Because He lives in you by the Holy Spirit. Without His Holy Spirit, we can do nothing. 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 I've experienced this so many times in my life. Like the Lord just reminds me, Andre, this isn't you. So I'm like praying for someone and suddenly the presence of God just moves away. Like, no. No, come back. (laughs) Can't heal the headache. Can't do anything. Just a donkey without the presence of God. But when He is present, all things are possible. Come on, say it. All things are possible. When God is present. With God, with God, with God. And then verse 17, if anyone defiles the temple of God, God will destroy him. For the temple of God is holy, which temple you are. So think about this for a moment. You had Solomon's temple and you get this brainwave. I'm going to take this big sledgehammer and I'm going to walk up to this temple and I'm going to just hit it. What do you think is going to happen to you? Like five soldiers on top of you like, what are you doing? Don't mess with the temple of God. It's holy. It's glorious. This is his house. How dare you defile the temple of God? You see, when you and I, when we give our lives to Jesus, it means you have no rights. You now belong to Him. You have no right to get offended because when you get offended, you remove the presence of God off your life. You have no right to defile yourself, eyes, ears, hands, whatever, because you defile and the presence of God moves away. Oh, but when you see, when you see what is possible in Him, the only question you ask is, God, how can I surrender more of myself to you? How can I be holier? I know it's your blood that washes me clean, but Lord, how can I completely surrender my life to you? I tell you that nothing compares to carrying His presence upon your life and you can pray for an 11-year-old and a nine-year-old boy and suddenly they can chuck their hearing aids away. It's incredible. I tell you, then you're like, okay, God, have more. <laughs> How can I give more of myself to you? How can I be purer, more holy, more righteous? How can I represent you better? Jesus, the purpose of the temple is to carry His presence. And when you carry His presence, all things become possible. And this is for all of us. We have no right to defile the temple. So there's an American healing evangelist, R.W. Shambuck. There's some crazy stories that he shares. But he said, you don't have any trouble. All you need is faith in God. So he would always say, this is one liner. Every meeting, every radio show, he would always say, you, have, you don't have any trouble. All you need is faith in God. And so he shares where this comes from. He was uh, invited for for supper with a businessman. Says a man invited invited Shambuck for supper and shared his story with him. He said he had been, he'd never been sick a day in his life. He had money in the bank. His future was secure. He worked for the government, but all of a sudden something struck him, spinal meningitis and paralyzed him from head to toe. He spent over three months in the hospital. Doctors were called in from all around the world. His bank account dwindled. He had to sell his home for the equity to pay the doctor bills. Rheumatoid arthritis crept into every joint until he couldn't stand the pain. He lapsed into a coma for almost four months. He was present, but just fully paralyzed. So since the man was Roman Catholic, his priest was called to administer the last rites of that church. Lying in the coma, he knew what the priest was doing. But he couldn't communicate because he was paralyzed. He couldn't flicker an eyelash, he recalled. How would you feel when you know that the priest is giving you the last rites, the last ceremony in the Catholic Church before you die? He says, as soon as the priest left, another priest walked through the wall and over to the bed. 
There was something different about this priest. He was dressed all in white. The new priest leaned down to the dying man and called him by name. He said, you don't have any trouble. All you need is faith in God. Of course, he was laying there thinking, what kind of crazy priest is this? I don't have any trouble. Here I am in a coma. I can't communicate. There's arthritis in every joint. I have spinal meningitis. I had to sell my home. My bank account is gone. Is this not trouble? But the priest said, I am Jesus of Nazareth, and I'm going to heal you right now. Isn't that beautiful? Jesus said, when I walk out of this room, I want you to get out of this bed, shave, wash, and walk out of this hospital. Go to the first bookstore you can find and buy a Bible. Start reading from St. John's Gospel. You will find the way to eternal life. Hallelujah. The man told us that Jesus turned and walked right back through the wall. As the man was telling me the story, he looked at me and said, Brother Shambuck, I wonder why Jesus didn't use the door. <laughs> then I, Shambuck, said, because he is the door. He can make an entrance wherever you are. At work, at home, in your car, at any time. Jesus Christ is the door. And every miracle is evidence for the reality of God. He is alive and he's still working mightily. So the man, then he said, when Jesus walked out of that room, the man got out of bed and started shaving. The nurse came tiptoeing in. She wanted to pull the sheet over because the other priest had walked out. But she saw the bed empty. She ran into the bathroom and said, please get back into bed. Don't you know you're dying? <laughs> the priest gave you the last rites. The man said to her, cool it, honey. Another priest came in and gave me the first rites all over again. I'm going to live. Amen. Praise God. You don't have any trouble. All you need is faith in God. All you need is faith in God. When faith is present, God moves. When faith is present, God moves. Luke chapter 4, verse 17. Final verse I'm going to read. It said, he was handed the book of, the, this is Jesus. He was handed the, the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. You see, Jesus did his miracles by the Holy Spirit, not by his Godhood. He said, because he, God, has anointed me to preach, to proclaim the gospel, the good news to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to restore hearts, to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind. To set at liberty those who are oppressed, again, the whole man. To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. This anointing brings restoration to people's lives. Whether it's marriages, relationships, hearts, bodies, minds. This anointing, when the kingdom of heaven comes, floods in, everything that's out of order needs to be restored. And that is God's heart for you. But what if you and I could be spirit-led every moment of the day, every day, led by the Spirit, partnering with what God is doing, not just our own ideas. I tell you that takes things into another dimension. But then we need to become more aware of Him, live in His presence, a lifestyle of worship, a lifestyle of prayer, a lifestyle of just, God, I love you. It's about Him. It's about intimacy with Him. And then from that place, we can extend the throne room of God into people's lives. Tell you, nothing compares. But that last bit, it says, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Do you know what that speaks of? That speaks of the year of Jubilee. So in the Old Testament, in, in, in the book, books of, of Moses, the Lord spoke about every seven years is like a Sabbath for the soil. And then every seven times seven, every 49 years, the 49th or the 50th year would be the year of Jubilee. So in that year, if you were sold as a slave in that last 50 years, you would be set free. 
and you could be you could be go free. If you've lost your property or you've been dispossessed of your property, it would be restored back to you. It was the year of jubilee of restoration. And the beautiful thing is they say that that you they they would blow the ram's horn trumpet to proclaim the announcement that the year of jubilee has come. They would blow the shofar. They would blow the shofar. So I, I, I feel this is part of our inheritance in Jesus, the shofar churches. We are to proclaim, guys, it's the year of Jubilee. It's the time of restoration. It is the time of healing, of salvation, of deliverance. It is now. Why? Because Jesus paid for it. 2,000 years ago when He shed His blood at the cross, He paid for your healing. He paid for your forgiveness. He paid so you don't need to be tormented by the enemy anymore. He paid it. You must just receive it by faith. And we're trusting this morning as we're going to pray for you guys that you're going to experience the year of Jubilee, the the acceptable year of the Lord, the time of favor. So look at this, Matthew 10, 7 again. It says, and as you go at the temple, of the Holy Spirit, the the ones who carry His glory. As you go, preach, saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Why? Because you're carrying the glory. But you're also a distributor of the glory of God. Then it says, heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out demons. And then lastly, they freely you have received, freely give. Freely you have received, now give it. I mean, imagine this, someone, a really wealthy man, gives you a million dollars, US, not Zim, US, the real deal, the real McCoy, gives you a million dollars and he says, go and give it to that person. You can't use it on yourself. You can only give it away. What a privilege to go to someone and say, hey, Here's, here's this that Jesus paid for, salvation. I mean, you might have been on your way to eternal damnation without Jesus. Now I give you this good news. Here is eternal life in the mighty name of Jesus. I mean, that's worth more than a million dollars. Eternal salvation. You and I can share that with others. Or you can come and say, hey, 11-year-old boy was born almost deaf, Here's healing in the name of Jesus. Let me give to you what God has given to me, His presence. And in this restorative anointing, be healed in Jesus' name. Oh, what a privilege. What an honor to carry His love and His goodness and His healing anointing and to release that to somebody. So if you and I are just the delivery man, we can take no glory. They didn't even say thank you. You're just the delivery man. Say thank you to the wealthy one man who, who gave this million dollars. Here it is. It's yours. Experience this that Jesus died for. Another side of it might be, imagine receiving a million dollars for someone who's tormented and struggling and lost, and we don't give it to them. We have this responsibility So with the blessing, we also have the responsibility. We need to give it. We need to give it. That's why I feel God is saying to me, give my people an encounter with me. This is what I called you to. Give them an encounter with me. A touch from heaven, a touch from Jesus, as if Jesus Christ himself is here right now. What would Jesus do if he was here right now? Well, he would save and he would heal and he would set you free. And he is here through his Holy Spirit. He is is here. We are just servants of the King. Giving that which He has freely given to us, giving it away free. It's yours. He loves you. He loves you. He paid for it. Now receive it by faith. Receive your restoration. Receive your healing. So do we realize what you and I carry And maybe you feel like, well, I'm not caring much yet. Then reposition yourself in his presence. Say, God, I want this. 
I want this. It was so beautiful to pray for the pastor at Shofar Swakopmund. They've been through a really challenging season the last two years. And to pray with a pastor, and he said his hands of some form of arthritis has come into his hands, prayed with him, and then he was healed in Jesus' name. Just so beautiful. He's like, wow, wow. And then to pray, to prophesy of him, this is, this is who you are in Jesus. To see his joy restored, to see peace restored, to see that, that fire of the Holy Spirit begin to burn in him. What an honor to give what Jesus has given to us. Last story. So... Uh, on Sunday morning as well, last week, Sunday morning, there was a lady that a lot, a lot of people were being, being healed and, and, and touched. And so this one lady came and she shared with me that she had hip replacements, both hips, a lot of pain in her hips. And also the one f leg is like that much shorter than the other. So when she walks, she literally walks with a limp. You know, you can see that's how she walks because of this massive difference in the length of her one leg. So we prayed with her in the name of Jesus. And the next moment, the, all the pain disappeared. No pain in her hips. Then I put her down the chair and I checked her legs and I could, oh, it looks the same length to me. And then she started to walk up and down. No limp, no limp, absolutely healed in the name of Jesus. So I share this because I want to tell you, Jesus is alive. And he's still working mightily in the earth. This is our inheritance in Jesus. We are supposed to live in the power and the presence of the living God. This is what we are called to, living daily lifestyle of miracles because God is with us. He is the miracle worker. Just carry his presence. Hallelujah.